Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of 60 Formula. Hope you're doing well today. Happy Sunday. It's the end of the week, or maybe it's the beginning, I don't know. Whichever one you go with, some people are like, it's the end of the weekend, bro. That means the week starts tomorrow. And other people are like, well, it's the official start of the week on Sunday. So today, the week officially starts. Whatever jam you roll with, or whatever roll you jam with, we hope you're having a super duper Sunday. How was your weekend, miss? Was it good? Can you do me a favor? Can you speak? Good girl. Can you stand? That was the worst stand I've ever seen in the history of Husky standing. Come on, Broski Maloski. I know you can do it. Stand. <laughs> She's like, I will lift thy two paws off the ground for a microsecond. This must not be a good enough treat for you. What do I got to do, woman? What do I have to do? Come on, give me a good stand. There we go. That was good. I bet Britney Spears could do way, way, way better than you, lady. Yeah, I bet you he could listen a little bit better than you. Stay. Stay. Okay. Good boy. Crunch, 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 crunch. So today we're gonna be talking about some really, really importante stuff. And what we mean by that is this information is very important. Today we're gonna be talking about three common diseases and illnesses that Siberian Huskies commonly get. Now it's mega important to know all of the different illnesses and diseases that dogs can get before you decide on a breed. In fact, researching all of the health concerns about a doggo should be part of the determination in which breed you end up buying. Now, all types of dog breeds can get different types of diseases and illnesses, so you really have to do your research on what type of ailments are attributed to your dog breed. And so that's why today we're gonna be bringing you a video on all the different things you need to know about Siberian Huskies health-wise. It's mega important because if you're considering getting a Siberian Husky, adding one of these beautiful dogaroni pizzas to your family, you gotta know everything, the good and the bad, especially when it comes to your dog's health. Because overall, health is gonna be number one when you get one of these floofy little boof heads. And look at that dirty little face over there. You giving me a dirty stink eye? You giving me a dirty stink eye because I got a treat in my hand and I'm not letting you have it right away? All right, let's get into the goodness. Come with us, will you, on another episode of that 60 formula where we find out three common diseases that Siberian Huskies get in their lifetime. All right, let's go. All right, let's jump right into the episode today. Let's not waste any time. Let's talk about some of the things that Siberian Huskies have to deal with when it comes to health concerns. Now we got three different things on the list today, but first off, before we get into it, I just wanna say this. I know that I have been slacking on the Patreon, daddy-o. If you are a patron to our channel and you donate monthly, things are going to be changing really soon. I have to focus more on the videos on the Patreon page. I have not been posting regularly and I promise to get more videos up there. Also, at the end of the video, we have way more patrons than I have written down. So what I plan to do in the next couple of weeks is completely change the outro to the YouTube channel. You're still gonna get that awesome music that comes at the end, but we're gonna have a different little outro for you to enjoy that's going to include all of your names who donate on the Patreon page. So if you're interested in donating to the Patreon page, you can find the link down below. And for those of you who are already donating, Thank you so much. You help us do so much on this channel. You help us grow. And it's all because of you that we get to have all this fun every single day. All right, you ready to get into the episode? Are you ready to get into the episode? Are you? Hanging out with Huskies every day. It makes me so, so happy in every way. Look at that booty. It's so dang cute. And I want to pick up that booty fruit. She's like, can you please never ever do that again on YouTube? I, yeah, thank you. All right, let's say that you got a Siberian Huskaroni pizza or you're thinking about getting one. One of the things you're gonna have to always be concerned about is their health. So these problems right here are three common problems, three common diseases, whatever you wanna call it, my friend, that Siberian Huskies commonly get. Number one is going to be eye problems. 
Now, obviously, all dogs eventually get eye problems the older that they get, but Siberian Huskies can be an exception. But first, let's talk about the different types of eye diseases that Siberian Huskies can get. Typically, there are three different types of eye diseases that Siberian Huskies can get. The first one is corneal dystrophy, which is an abnormal material that grows within the eye and can cause blindness. Hereditary cataracts, which is the clouding of the eye lens and can cause blindness. And retinal atrophy, which is degeneration of the retina. Now, most dogs are prone to this because most dogs just get older and over time, their eyes get worse. If you've ever seen your dog's eyes or your pet's eyes get cloudy or kind of hazy the older that they get, this is because they're getting getting older and they're succumbing to some of these eye diseases. Now, the reason that Siberian Huskies are particularly prone to this kind of thing, and the reason we're talking about it today, is because dogs with blue eyes typically are more prone to cataracts than dogs with other colored eyes. And well, typically, Siberian Huskies have blue eyes, whether it be one or two. Now, I know there's a lot of rumors out there that say, blue-eyed dogs, they become blind way quicker. This is not necessarily true. If your dog has blue eyes, it does not mean that they're going to have a hard time seeing before another dog, like say with brown eyes. What it means is that the pigment inside of dog's eyes that are blue are more prone to cataracts over time. And because cataracts can cause blindness, Blindness, this is why some people came to the assumption that dogs with blue eyes become blind very quickly. It's not the case. They're just more prone to cataracts. But you can make sure that you're preventing all of these different things from happening at an early age by feeding your dog a healthy diet, making sure that they're not straining their eyes in any way by not having collars too tight and not adopting prong collars or collars that tighten whenever your dog pulls. This is why we highly encourage harnesses that actually strap around the dog's shoulders and pull from that area because you can actually damage your dog's esophagus and the blood vessels in their eyes when you are tugging at a collar around the neck. So just be aware, these cute little Siberian Huskies may have beautiful eyes, but if you have one that has blue eyes, you may just need to be sure that you're taking extra care and careful consideration of what's going on with them little grapes inside their head. Do it. Speak. What was, that was not a speak. That was like a growl. Speak. No, that's, that's growl. The second disease and the second illness that Siberian Huskies commonly suffer from is hip problems. More specifically, hip dysplasia. If you've never heard of hip dysplasia, it is mega, mega common among Siberian Huskies. Probably mostly due to the fact that they are very, very flexible. Siberian Huskies are flexible because they have to run long, long distances and they're prepared for endurance. So typically, Siberian Huskies joints are able to move in ways that most dogs can't move their joints. They're just really flexible dogs, but this causes abnormal hip socket placement. And because of this, your dog over time can get hip dysplasia. And Huskies are especially sensitive to this disease. Now what happens with hip dysplasia is that the hip becomes abnormal in the hip socket and this can cause arthritis, pain, a whole slew of different issues. And before you know it, your Siberian Husky isn't gonna be pulling you anywhere, you're gonna be pulling them. So what can you do to make sure that your dog isn't getting hip dysplasia early on? Well, there's a ton of different precautions that you can take. One of them that we do is make sure that we're giving our dogs all sorts of really healthy, really beneficial supplements so that they get all of the vitamins and minerals that they need and their bones are extra strong. Right now is a really great time to mention our sponsor for today's video, which is Pup Science. Pup Science creates amazing hip and joint supplements that you're able to give your dog on a daily basis. This ensures that over time, their bones are mega strong to make sure that they're not getting anything like hip dysplasia early on in life. Pup Science uses absolutely safe ingredients to make sure that your dog is getting the vitamins and minerals they need to keep their bones strong and safe from things like hip dysplasia. Each container of Pup Science hip and joint vitamins 
come with 60 tablets that are super duper safe for your pepperoni pizza. They promote and maintain hip and joint functionality within your dog and will keep them healthy for years to come. So we definitely recommend checking out a supplement. And if you wanna start with Pup Science, we definitely recommend trying them out. You can find all their information down below in the description. And if there's a coupon down there, it'll even save you a couple dollars. And you'll help us out in the process. Are you guys ready? You guys want some? Yeah, you like this stuff? Yeah, it's intended for intermittent and supplemental feeding only, so you don't want to make this thing like a regular dietary thing. As always, be sure to be safe and make sure that you're constantly monitoring your doggo's appetite and diet. You ready to go over the last one? You ready to go over the last illness? The last disease? She's like, dude, I'm just ready for this episode to be over. It's really creepy. Why didn't we do this on Halloween? Because it's really important to tell everybody what kind of diseases Huskies can get. Hey, don't be mean. Yeah, you'd be good. You'd be good. All right, last but not least, let's talk about one of the most common ailments that Siberian Huskies suffer from. Believe it or not, it affects Northern breeds the most. Now, if you're familiar with this disease, I'm sure that you know all about it because it does require a lot of research and veterinarians aren't really good at diagnosing it. Number three is going to be zinc deficiency or more in detailed zinc malabsorption. To make a very long story short, all dogs need a good amount of zinc in their body. However, Siberian Huskies and Northern breeds need a little bit more. For some reason, they require more amounts of zinc. Well, there are cases where Siberian Huskaroni pizzas will have zinc malabsorption, which means it's really hard, almost impossible for their bodies to absorb zinc. And when this happens, a full range of ailments come flying in. You have a loss of hair. It can cause your husky to be tired, lethargic. They won't eat. They'll have a loss of appetite. There's a whole laundry list of things that zinc malabsorption can cause, and it really can make your Siberian husky sick. So if you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your husky, maybe they're sick for a long period of time and vets can't figure out what's wrong, you may want to research zinc deficiencies. Lots of Siberian Huskies suffer from zinc deficiency, and the easiest way to treat it is just to feed your Huskaroni pizza some zinc. Make sure they have a diet rich in zinc, and maybe even getting them a zinc supplement on the side might be a good idea. So that's it. Those are the three diseases, the three deficiencies or illnesses or ailments that Siberian Huskies regularly get. I still don't even know what to call them, and we just did a whole episode on it. He's like, dude, just call it a freaking disease, okay? And get over it, daddy-o. If you guys have any questions, if you want to know anything about these diseases, hit us up in the comments below. We're happy to share any information that we can share with you. We suggest you guys look it up if you're thinking about getting a Siberian Husky. And if you're overly worried about one of these things, do all the research that you can. We want to thank you guys so much for choosing our channel to come and hang out, have a good old time with that big old pink nose. We appreciate you so much. And like we said to our patrons, we promise to get the ending fixed and get brand new episodes on the patron page. So until next time, smash that like button and make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss a Husky episode. And we'll see you later with another episode of Guess What, Mrs. Guess What? Whatever we make. Peace!